So hello everybody, uh, you're very welcome. Um, my name is Colin Downs. I'm the Access Program Manager with the Irish Universities Association. Um, we're really delighted to welcome so many of you today joining us online for the information session um, into how to make a successful application to here make the application process as smooth as possible. After my own uh, quick introduction, I'll be delighted to hand you over to Minister Simon Harris, uh, followed by uh, a here presentation, guiding you through the application process. And then after that, we'll have a live uh, Q&A session, um, uh, just to respond to some of the questions that you put to us in the registration process. Now, during the entire uh, process, uh, or during the entire session, we really encourage you to ask questions uh, via the link that's provided in the chat. So you'll see uh, down the bottom of your screen, um, there's an icon saying chat. And when you click into that, you'll see that my colleague, Leah O'Sullivan, and thanks, Leah, for your help, has provided a link. And when you click on that link, you'll see a grey bar across your screen. And within that grey bar, it says, ask us a question. So once you type a question in there, it goes in behind the the cogs and the machinery and there's a person from one of our participating colleges called a here advisor who's there to um, provide an answer to your question and they walk one of one of our participating colleges all around the country um now in order to access that function you need two two screens open and we're fully aware that not everybody is able to use or is that familiar with the technology so you may want to just go the old-fashioned route and write down your questions um, during uh, the course of the webinar. As I said, we're going to be doing a presentation a bit, or broadcasting a, a presentation in a couple of minutes. So it might be worth holding off even on the questions until um, until that presentation is over because I may ask, answer some of the questions you're asking. I would let you know as well that when you do ask us one of the, uh, ask us a question via the link that we've set that, that's been posted in the chat, that your name won't be visible. Um, in, in on the internet or won't be visible to anyone else other than the person that's going to respond to your question, nor will your email address or any other per personal details. So I would ask you when you do post a question though, um, and when you type out your type out your question, don't type in um and maybe applicants' names or um dates of birth or postal addresses or anything that can identify them individually. This is to protect your own um privacy. And that's of the utmost importance to all of us. Now, I'm also going to say that um, this session is recorded, and any uh, once we finished it, once this session is finished, we have to do a little bit of work on it, and then we hope to post it out and it'll be posted live on our website on Monday or Tuesday next week. But anyone, of course, who's logged into this session and uh, had to do so and had to register with an email address. So we'll automatically send out uh, an email with a recording of this session to your email address afterwards. So you can pause, rewind, and just revise over any of the parts of the, um, the session that you might need to get just a reminder of, because it is complex um, and uh, any kind of help you can get is very beneficial. Um, please do ask as many questions as you, as you want. Um, there's no such thing as a silly question. We're here for that very purpose. We're very used to them and we want them. Um, the most important thing I can say to you today is, is that uh, we want you in our colleges. And there are lots of people, thousands of people who access uh, higher education through here every year. You're not on your own. And, um, and um, I know from my speaking from a personal point of view, and I know that other people on this call who will be presenting and answering questions, get up out of bed in the morning with the motivation of working with people um, um, who, who want to access uh, college through the here route. So we're here to support you. Please do take advantage of it, us. Now, um, is there anything else you just need to do? Let's say in the notes, I think, yeah, if you don't get your question answered today, um, just, it's, it, it, you know, there's many, many ways to ask us a question. Um, you can visit the accesscollege.ie forward slash here website. And within that, uh, within that website, you'll see a list of participating colleges. And on that list, there are a bunch of phone numbers and email addresses. Now, those phone numbers don't go just to the general reception. They go specifically to a here advisor. In other words, somebody who will be able to answer your question on the spot. Um, so um, 
we're joined on the call uh, today at the moment, uh, by a couple of people who are just going to turn on their cameras just to give you a, a little wave. Um, it, uh, you can see Daniel McFarlane is with Trinity College Dublin. Uh, Colette Kyo is with Dublin City University. Sinead Quinn is with the CAO. And Mary Surlis is in the University of Galway. Okay, so we have two East. Two Easties and two Westies. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to ask them uh, uh, to turn off their cameras again. Um, because I'm going to hand over now to um, I'm going to hand over to um, uh, uh, hand over to Minister Simon Harris, Minister of Further Higher Education, Research, Innovation, and, Sci and Science, who's recorded a couple of words to say to you today. Okay. Over to you, Minister. Hey there, and I'm delighted to virtually welcome you today to the second online Dare and Hear application information session. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you at this important event. I really also want to thank Colm Downs, the Access Manager at the Irish Universities Association, and Sinead Quinn in the CAO for today's organisation. And most importantly, welcome to you all. Welcome to students, parents, guardians, guidance counsellors, as well as our Access and Disability Officers and many others working in the higher education sector. I wanted to be here today to really convey one message, and I hope it's a clear message. Education is for everyone, and our mission is to ensure that no one is left behind. Many students and their families see college as something that's not for them, or even if they aspire to it, still feel it's beyond their reach. And I'm determined that we work together to change this. This information session provides a really unique opportunity, a chance for you to address the questions you have as you begin to think about your higher education choices and prepare to make an application to dare or to hear. I want to assure you that there are many, many pathways available to you that will allow you to further your education and make your dreams and your ambitions a reality. Success takes many forms and we all grow when we have that sense of belonging. Going from school to higher education can be exciting, but it can also be daunting and it presents great opportunities and new challenges. So let me now turn to some of the options you may be exploring. DARE and HERE are higher education admission schemes and they aim to achieve a quality of access by providing reduced points places to school leavers. These schemes were developed by a number of universities and colleges to try and mitigate the negative impact that socioeconomic disadvantage or a disability can sometimes have on progression and participation in higher education. And now every college operates the DARE and the HERE scheme. In 2023, almost one in five students applied to the CAO on the basis of the DARE or the HERE eligibility. The Disability Access Route to Education, or what we call DARE, is a third level alternative admission scheme for school leavers with a disability and whose disability has had a negative impact on their second level education. It offers reduced points places to school leavers who, as a result of having a disability, have experienced additional educational challenge in second level education. The HERE scheme, the Higher Education Access Route, is a higher education admission scheme for school leavers. It aims to provide access to higher education for students from socioeconomic disadvantaged backgrounds using a range of social and cultural indicators, offering them reduced points and extra college support. At the heart of these schemes is making sure everyone gets a chance, no matter who they are, where they come from, what their parents did or worked at before, what gender they are, or whether they have a disability or not. So I want to wish you every success in the years ahead with the decisions you're making on your future. Remember, there's always help and support out there and be confident about the options available. And please today ask every and any question you can think of. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Today is your opportunity to get as much information because your journey is only beginning. And I'm so excited to see where it brings you. So thank you so much to everyone who's worked so hard to organise today. Enjoy the day. and I hope you find it really beneficial. Thank you. Gurmeen Wallace. Great. Thanks so much um, to Minister Harris for his continued and passionate interest in access and disability issues at higher education. We're really appreciative of, of his efforts and, and of his address today. Um, so uh, I'm going to hand you over now to my colleague, Daniel McFarlane in Trinity College Dublin, who's going to talk you through uh, the application, uh, just an overview of what here is and through the application process. He's going to give us some top tips along the way as well. So again, the grab a piece of paper and pen would be very useful at this stage. Over to you, Daniel. Thanks a million. Thanks very much, Colm. Um, again, you're all very welcome here today. And like myself, I hope you're buoyed by the uh, very positive message from Minister Harris. Um, I'm going to start today now. And just before I jump in, I just wanted to make sure there that everybody is ready to go. Um, uh, column did say that you do uh, you might have your pencil or your pen ready don't feel like you have to to catch up with me as you go we will be recording this session and we will be sending it back to you so if you feel like you, 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 you have information you have questions steady the ropes there and don't be worrying about trying to tick and keep up because we will have time to answer questions we will have time to pick this back up so again you're very welcome here today uh, to hear about the higher education access route 
Um, my name is Daniel McFarlane. Uh, as Colin said, I work for the Trinity Access Programme, but I'm also in the really privileged position that I actually came to college through the HEAR scheme uh, many moons ago. But nonetheless, the HEAR scheme worked for me and it's going to work for you. But it really does uh, rely on everybody knowing what they're entitled to, knowing what you might need to be uh, required to provide in terms of documentation and information. And then the best thing as well, knowing that you're not alone in that application. There is a whole rake of help. Uh, there is a whole army of practitioners. And again, almost like what Minister Harris just said, and something that I believe in my practice um, there's never been a better time to be getting involved in higher education, particularly as a here student, but also if we can extend that to uh, students who might be on the DARE scheme or even students both who are here and there. So, as I said, buckle up and um, we're going to go through some of the things and then I'm also then I'll be able to hand it over to my colleagues at the very end who might be able to talk about some of the, the common cases that we find on the scheme. So I'm going to run through this. And I'm just going to make sure I have everything ready to go. So, again, this might not be the first time that you've heard what the HEAR uh, scheme is or the HEAR route, but I hear it time and time again with my 60 year students or even with parents. People get a little bit confused about what HEAR is. So, I'm going to bring it back to the very, very basics just for now. And the higher education access route, it's an admissions route for students uh, in sixth year who for social, financial or cultural reasons are underrepresented in third level. And I know we don't all go around thinking of those kind of terms and sometimes they can be quite dense terms. But if I could just bring it back to the spirit of what the scheme is, the scheme is set up so that all Leave and Search students have a fair and equal opportunity to go to college. So again, it's listening to who isn't coming to college. It's listening to the mechanisms that might have stopped people from coming to college. And it's trying to help students like yourselves get to that next stage in life. And you might be saying to me, that's wonderful, but what colleges are you talking about? And obviously I represent Trinity College Dublin and there is a whole rake, if you just see there on the on the right hand side of the scheme of Dublin uh, based universities. But if you look around, the HEAR scheme isn't just a passport to one college. It's all of these colleges in Ireland. So if you look up there, there's ATU in Donegal, Sligo, ATU Galway, University of Galway. TUS Athlone, there's SETU, Carlo and Wexford, we've uh, TUS Limerick, we've Mary Oi, we've UL, we've wonderful colleagues down MTU on the Kerry campus. We also have MTU at Cork, UCC, SETU and Waterford, and if I can bring it back to my colleagues there as well in Minute, um, and then all of the Dublin-based colleges. So it's not just about saying, you know, the HEAR scheme is access for, for one college, it's a passport for all, all of these colleges that we mentioned here. So there are loads of opportunities, but again, we need to think about how to get them and what to be thinking about. So students always say to me, why should I apply to here? I'm doing an I'm doing an arts degree and the points are actually low enough and my grades are fine. And that's OK. But maybe that's not the only help that the HEAR scheme is going to afford you. So, of course, the HEAR scheme is reduced points for your CAO, but also it's post entry supports. And that's it's a kind of a dense access term. But what we mean by that is that's help to keep you in college, not just get you to college. So that the kind of help that I'm talking about for post-entry supports, that could be additional funds, that could be academic help, let's say, whether you need right resource help or help with, let's even say, like access in a library. And then also, maybe not everybody needs help with the academic side of things in college. But if you are from a family where you might be the first person to go to college, you might need help with social uh, life in college. Or then if you think about some of the personal side of things, maybe you might need a buddy or a mentor or even um, career help, let's say. So the HEAR scheme, it's not just about getting you to college. It's also about keeping you in college. And I'm here to provide that help today, but also with all these colleagues that are going to be able to speak to that help too. And we'll get to that in just a moment. So students say to me, what are, what are the benefits? What are the points? And every year, and I know people want to hear this, how many points? And can you give me a, a rough number? Can you give me a fine number? And the beauty of it is that because of all the participating colleges, the points are different for every different college. But if I can give you an example for some of the reduced points that you might be able to avail of, let's say if the leave insert points for a course at 366, if you're an eligible here student, you might be able uh, to be offered a place if you get 356. Now, I just want to make sure because students hear this and they run away and they never come back and talk to me again. Um, when you are thinking about applying to the HEAR scheme, it's not a magic wand. You do need to meet the entry requirements for the program. So even if you are an HEAR eligible student and you're getting the points for medicine, let's say, you still need to be sitting your HPAP 
or if you're also going to a course that might need you to have a second language, you still need to be fitting those program requirements is what we say. So again, you can't just be here eligible and you think that's fine enough. You still need to be making the program requirements. And I mentioned as well, there's no hard and fast rule anymore because of if you look at all the participants, they're all different colleges with different courses and different requirements. So the amount of points that you might be reduced, they are dependent on the number of places in the course, the number of reserved places, and then the number of here eligible applicants who are uh, who've applied for the course. So it does go up and down and almost like the CAO points every year, these things can fluctuate. So it's not necessarily a rule, it's more so a trend. And if you do need more clarification on that, there will be a chance for you to ask questions here today. But what I do ask you to do is if you just go on to page two of your here booklet there and you'll have all the contact details of the colleges and um, they will reach out to you they will help you in your application and they want to give you as much information as they can so you feel like you are ready to make your application so that's some of the benefits of applying to the here scheme and you might be saying this sounds wonderful this sounds like i definitely should be fitting i definitely want to apply but there are indicators and you do need to pay careful careful attention to the indicators that we have so i'll be really clear in this the first and most important indicator is was your household income on or below 46,790 for the year 2022. That is really, really crucial that we are talking about 2022, okay? So indicator number two, we wanna make sure and see, do you or your family have a medical card or a GP visit card? Number three, we need, we need to see if your parent or guardian received a means-tested social welfare payment. That is a very crucial word, means-tested social welfare payment for at least 26 weeks in 2022. And number four, if we can take it back to the one of the main reasons of why the HERE scheme exists, is your parents or guardians employment status underrepresented in higher education? Now, if I can just spend a minute or two on this, people don't go around thinking, are they underrepresented or are they represented really? But if I can just give you an example, if your mom worked in retail or if your guardian worked in retail and your parent might have worked in, um, uh, and your dad, let's say, or whoever might have worked in a, if it's a bus driver that would be underrepresented but if your parents were a doctor and a solicitor that would be represented so that's a good example of number four number five is have you attended a desh uh, second level school for five years and number six is trying to ask if you live in an area on concentrated disadvantage so again um these are the criteria they are very very important some of the terminology i understand can be a little bit difficult some of the questions can be a bit difficult but these are the rules that are that are going to tell you if you're eligible or ineligible. And you don't have to do it alone. You do need to seek uh, some assistance with this. So I do stress that you go home and you chat to whoever is your responsible uh, adult in your life, whether that's a parent, a guardian, a nanny, an auntie, an uncle, a mom or a dad. You do need to chat to whoever's at home. And I do see that there are some questions coming into the chat. But if we can just ask if you hold off on those questions, there will be a chance for you to talk about that so as i said it was the same with my application you don't just go it alone you don't just think oh we're represented we're underrepresented oh we're eligible we're ineligible these are really really large questions and large uh pieces of work that i need to make sure that you talk to the responsible adult in your life about because what i happens every year and i don't want this to happen for students is that they think they're ineligible or they think they're eligible and they don't talk to the people around them so you need to ask um whoever like i said is the responsible parent in your life um whoever is the responsible parent in your life about making an application okay so i'm going to rock on to some of the next kind of key points that we always talk about so i've jumped a slide there sorry so you have to remember you need to meet the income limit and the right combination of two other indicators and instead of us getting into the highly complicated points of this i will ask you to just revert to your here booklet or even the access college website it's such an amazing resource but again the most important is the here income limit and we are looking at the year 2022 so i'm going to rock on to just make sure and and you know talk some about some of the mechanisms students might say that sounds wonderful i sound like i'm eligible i chatted with whoever's at home we're able to apply how do I apply? So you need to be making sure to apply to the CAO. You really do need to be working on the handbook at home with your parent or guardian or whoever is your responsible adult. And you need to make sure that everyone understands what's being asked of them. Likewise, then you need to be making sure to complete all online here applications. 
by the 1st of March 2022 at five o'clock. And then the second thing that we need you to do is send clear copies of the support and documents uh, that you're on your checklist. And of course, we all know that needs to be done by the 15th of March 2024. I'll talk a little bit about some good admin and some good housekeeping in terms of deadlines. But again, for now, you apply all online through the CAO. So you're probably saying to me, well, what documents do I need? Where can I get them? Where can I source them? And of course, the required documents that we do ask, some of them are different dependent on the application, but you will get a wonderful checklist. Um, the HERE application, there's some absolutely amazing automated responses now that they have with your application. So if you tick certain criteria, they will tell you by the end of your application what you need to send in. So you don't need to guess and think about, oh, maybe we need this, maybe we need that. Your HERE checklist will tell you what you need. But what I do need to make sure to tell you is that you need to provide all the documents that the HERE checklist has told you. You can't kind of send on some documents and then maybe wait and see after the deadline if you get another. You need to make sure to be collecting these things in a timely fashion. And if I could put my kind of uh, senior cycle hat on for a second and my own experience and my students' experience every year, now is the time to be collecting those documents. Um, you're going into your mocks. You'll be going into all the other preparation side of things. And six years hard enough without making sure that you've forgotten to apply to the HERE scheme. So do start gathering those documents before the 15th of February. Send them before the 15th of February. And when you are doing that, if I can just make sure to let everyone know as well, just do good, good admin around it. Make sure they're clear. Go into your guidance counsellor, ask them to do some photocopy inside of things. And even just put your CAO number there at the top, your uh, your number on a little post-it note. It's almost like the leave insert, or even like if you're doing exams at home uh, or in school, make sure to give the assessor the easiest amount of job as possible there um, to, to give you uh, as much help as possible. So again, send in all those documents by the 15th of March, 2024. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone has the most amount of time to, to get them going. So again, I'll rock on to the next bit. Um, so we just mentioned that, so we don't really need to, um, obviously you can start your application now, it's all online and it's all good to go. But again, some of the sample documents, I'll, I'll, I'll mention this for a little bit, is that you need to be looking at things like state of liability or a self-assessment letter for 2022. Those, those are the documents that you can provide um, your income. And even again, Access College have good examples of this, but so do uh, your HERE booklet. They've got great examples of what it might look like on page 22 of your HERE booklet, how to look in at the, the sample documents, how to look at the self-assessment letter. And then again, um, you might need to go to the social welfare to, to get a signed and stamped letter. That's also in your HERE booklet. So everything's there for you. You do need to meet us halfway though and work on your application. And if you are a student who's in the care of the state or has care experience, a letter from TUSLA should be required now just so that you know that exactly what you're you're required for and what, what's required of your application. So I'll rock on again. Um, I've been a HERE practitioner now for a good few years, as of my colleagues, and there is so many uh, professionals at your fingertips, but we need to make sure that you meet us halfway and you make sure to do good, a good application and to have everything ready on time. So do study the handbook carefully. My students every year take one of these. If you don't have one, you can email your access office, ask them for one, they can email one to you, but they are all online. Um, you need to complete the online application accurately. Don't just assume we know who you are, we know what's going on. You do need to be as clear as you can. And likewise, again, with that uh, description of your parents' occupation or your guardian's occupation, um, you need to make sure that you're given the clearest description of your, uh, your job and your role. Um, as I said, request the required support and documentation early. Do it now. You do need it now. And do send good qualities. If they're blurry, if they're difficult to understand, it's going to make the assessment very, very difficult. And then support all, uh, submit, sorry, all support and documents uh, that, are, that are requested. Don't just say, oh, I'll send this and I'll see what happens. Send everything. Please, please, please. And like I said, too, submit the correct revenue documents. Um, it is really frustrating and it's also really sad to see student opportunities not being met when students send in the wrong documents, uh, the wrong year for the statement of liability. Remember, we're working at 2022 and despite everything being online and everything being quite techy, 
things do go wrong. So let's if there is a delay in the post going from wherever you're based in Ireland to the CAO in Galway, where the here uh, forms are assessed, keep your proof of postage. Go in to the post office. It doesn't cost anything to get proof of postage. It's just a little a little piece of paper, and it says that you you uh, send things off way ahead of time. And it says down here, deadlines, exclamation point. I cannot stress, we want to give you what's afforded to you. We want to give students the opportunities and the help that the HEAR scheme affords. But you need to meet us halfway. You need to be keeping to those deadlines and you need to make sure that you're on the ball. Because every year I have amazing students who are HEAR eligible, ready to go, are, are all good. And they literally forget. They don't send them in because of a myriad of reasons, whether that's health, whether that's uh, stress from the leaving cert or even things like just uh, forgetting it you really 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 shouldn't be because it's not worth the opportunity so keep to those deadlines and just to put the fear of god news all and I drive at home you know one of the most common reasons for ineligibility on the here scheme for 2023 and I can say also for the previous years too is sending in the wrong revenue document don't just jump in click it and go and then download it and try think this is fine look at the documents, look time and time again. If you're worried, if you're unsure about what you might need, review your HEAR booklet, reach out to your HEAR practitioner because we want to give you as much information and security as possible. So you might be saying, actually, no, I've got all my documents. I know what I'm entitled to. I've requested it all. I've chatted to my uh, parent or guardian. I've chatted to my guidance counsellor. What happens now when I apply? So you will be sending all your support and documents off. If you can see that, though, sorry, I jumped there. If you can see that there, you will have to send all your support and documents off. And um, by the 15th of March, you won't hear anything from the HEAR scheme. Or again, if you can see up there, it says the DARE scheme as well. You won't hear anything from anyone for a while. That's not your fault. That's not our fault. That was the time when, when assessing takes place. So you will send everything off. Um, and then around the end of the leading search, generally the last week of June, you'll get a notification of eligibility. You get an email, it will say, congratulations, you're eligible or you're ineligible. And again, there is a period there for when you can review an appeal if you're ineligible for whatever reason. That takes place in early July. And then you will get uh, your here, there offer through the CAO in August of 2024. So it's a very it's a very exciting time, but at the same time, you need to make sure to keep your eye on your emails. Um, sometimes the HEAR scheme might reach out to you, like I said, with the review and appeals process. And if you're in, if you're ineligible and you do need to reach back, there are very, very fine deadlines that you need to keep. And again, because the HEAR scheme is dealing with hundreds and thousands of applications, you need to make sure that you're within that time frame because we're dealing with students all over Ireland, not just one application. So don't give anyone a reason um, to try to be chasing after you. If someone needs you, look on those emails there and you'll get your offer. And then likewise, what I said, the post entry supports, the, the not just getting you to college, but keeping you in college, help of the HEAR scheme. You're, you'll have a specific college orientation for a HEAR student or maybe even a DARE student in uh, late August and early September, depending on your college course. So if I can jump on to the next bit, remember whether you're making an application to the HEAR scheme or the DARE scheme, you need to be submitting those documents. We do not know who you are until we read those documents. You need to check documents you need to make sure um that you're looking over them and you need to be sending them on to us so don't be a stranger if you're eligible we want to hear from you we want to help you and then just again because it happens every year with my students in sixth year and um, if you're eligible for here and there you can apply to both and that's what we would call in uh, admissions terms a dual candidate so you're both eligible doesn't mean you get double the points off or triple the points off or anything like that but it means that you're a student who's eligible for both here and there supports and you will be prioritised. So don't think that, you know, even if you're eligible for here and you're like, oh, sure, I'll just put my effort into there. Put your effort into both. It means you are afforded both help. So, again, my colleagues in the CAO and the IOA have done absolutely amazing work at putting as much helpful information on to the Access College website. And it really, really is such a help. My, my current first years in college always speak about uh, the help that the Access College website gave them in their application. So you can go on there, you can review. There's so many different bits of documents. There's so many wonderful videos and help. So do make sure to check that out if you do have any further questions. And likewise, uh, the HEAR scheme will always uh, be uh, communicating with you through email notifications. So you'll be able to see that there. 
and you'll see all that in late June. So that's kind of just to make sure to let you know that it's always online. And then if you do need further information, you can go to the CAO, you can go to SUSE, and you can also go to Qualifax. And then again, you can follow us on accesscollege.ie. But before I close it out, if I can just make sure to stress for you all, um, I'm looking back there to uh, the here booklet. As I said at the very beginning of the call, there has never been a better time to be getting involved in higher education. And that is true. But I want to make sure and stress with you guys, there's never been as much help and as many professionals that are on call for you to help you in your application. So if you are here today and you have a question that you want to ask, there is time for you to do that. But don't let that spontaneity or even that kind of curiosity and need to want to, to have more information about the HEAR scheme just exist for today. Reach out to the practitioners in all these other colleges, you know, the colleges that you're hoping to come to and that you want to apply for. Reach out to them. They'll talk to you over the phone. They'll talk to your parent, your guardian, anyone at all, because we want to hear from you. But we do need to make sure that you have everything ready to go so that we can meet in the middle and likewise, not just get you to college, but hopefully to keep you to college. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to hand it back to my colleague, Colm. And again, thank you very much for listening and thank you for your participation today. Thank you, Colm. Back to you. Cheers, Dan. Thanks a million for that. That was really informative and very thorough as well. Um, Appreciate especially all your top tips uh, as you're going through the various different slides there. It, it, it's, it's almost as if this is not the first time you've done it. Um, it's not, it. At <laughs> not, not at all. But again, um, Colin, I can just stress, it is that there's so many professionals that are working on the team that I know you and I collaborate with. So don't just let that interest exist today if you are an applicant. Continue it on because so many people want to help you, the applicants. So again, just thank you very much for your time. Okay, thanks a million, Daniel. That's uh, spot on advice, everybody. Um, I'm going to invite my colleagues, um, uh, Colecchio and DCU, Mary Surlis in the University of Galway and Sinead Quinn in uh, CAO to turn on their cameras now. We're going to start the um, Q&A part of the process. But just to really reiterate what Daniel has said, in, like we're not the only professionals really who are out there who are interested in getting you in the doors of our of, of our of our colleges and universities there are people all around the country in every public college and university in the country who want to you to who want you to join up and have a really successful and enjoyable experience at college and um, because for the most part that's what it is um so um I'll just start us off, I guess, with a few questions. Um, I'm going to come to um, I'm going to come to uh, Colette first, actually, um, and then I'm going to go to yourself, Mary. So, Colette, the question has come in, um, and it's a common question that we get as well. Um, it's a bit of a kind of an oxymoron of a question. What are the benefits that come with the Here Grant? Yeah, great. Thanks, Colm. Um, so applicants who are eligible tr through the HERE program, firstly can compete for reduced points places um, during the CAO offers. Um, if you get a place through the HERE program on reduced points, you will receive a variety of supports and every university delivers supports in a different way, but basically they are academic, personal and social supports while you're actually at college. So examples of those supports would include um, initially, an orientation program to introduce you to the university or the college. Um, you can see on the accesscollege.ie website, um, the dates for the 2024 orientation should be up um, in the various colleges. You'd also receive academic support in the form of tuition if required in various subjects that you might be struggling with. Um, support with study skills, exam preparation, lots of universities will put on different workshops to help you transition into university. Um, you'll also receive one-to-one -one meetings with your support officer in the HERE offices. Um, social gatherings, peer mentoring are all organized to help you e help, help ease you into college. And um, as well as that, extra financial assistance is provided where available. Um, and advice around grants and scholarships. Okay, thanks very much for that. Um, uh, collateral. Like we, we get that question every year, mm -hmm. and a lot of people really confuse that, uh, you know, here with, with Susie. We're not Susie, we're very different to Susie. Like, yeah. Susie will, like, 
here in depending on which college you go to may provide some provide some financial assistance when 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 you enter into your into that college but it won't go anywhere near covering your fees or kind of maintenance or the cost of going to college accommodation all of that kind of stuff you'll need to complete a separate application for susie and um, so that's a, and that's a whole new process that starts out in i think uh, march or april so please do check that out on an alternative website yeah. Um. Thanks a million for that. Uh. Um. Uh, Clash. So, uh, Mary, we got a lot of questions in from applicants regarding their, um, the status of parents in terms of separations and divorces. Um. In the the question I'm going to ask you now is that the applicant's mother is the sole guardian and always has been. Um. But she got married this year. Is her husband's income means tested for the application? Broke down a little bit there, Colin, in, in the question, but I kind of get the drift of it. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Oh. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. And again, as Daniel spoke about in his presentation, it's very important for the purpose of this application that you focus on. You'll hear me say this a lot today income 2022. That's the first thing that we get right. Colin, in terms of definition of a guardian, the guardian refers to who you lived with and contributed to the household income for 2022. That's the first thing. So parents who are separated and divorced, you fill in the income of the person you live with most of the time. So um, if somebody got married prior or during 2022, then that person's income, the, the person who is, if your mom's gotten married during 2022, then you submit your mom and the, and the person she married that income is submitted for the application. However, if your mom was not married in 2022 to this person, you do not submit the application. You do not submit that income on your application. So it's all about um, the income refers to the person and the contributors, contributors to the household income in 2022. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much, Mary. And that, that's a really important distinction to make. Um, so income for from the 1st of January 2022 to the 31st of December 2022, a complete year, not just one week or, you know, somebody might have had some social welfare for six months of 2022 and therefore and then and worked in the second half of 2022. We only provide one half. Of it. We need a complete picture of the 52 weeks for that year. And it's the most common error each year in complete income or the wrong documents are sent in. So try not to fall into in into that category of student who makes the makes a mistake with that part of the application, and to re in, reiterate Dan's Dan's point, there are many ways to ask a question. You can ask us a question online via the links that are pin, being posted in the chat. But um, again, when you visit accesscollege.ie forward slash here, there is a list of participating colleges. Their phone numbers and email addresses are available there. We have a very standard email address. There's uh, here at University of Galway. Um, there's here at DCU, here at TCD, here at UCD, here at UCC. So it's a very standard address. So whatever the email address of the college is, add here at, and you will get an email directly to that college. Okay, over to yourself, Sinead. Um, in the case of one of the applicants here, the um, his parent, one of his parents is deceased. Um, how should he proceed in relation to his, the other parents if the parents is alive and how should he proceed with um, his application? Uh, thanks, Colm. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so for uh, this application, the applicant can include um, the, the parents' detail on the online CAO applica CURE application. So under Section 7, um, select the parents that contributed to uh, the household income in 2022. So if parent was deceased prior to 2022, there's obviously no need to um, submit any income documentation there. Um, if it's a case that this is a recent bereavement and you've access to the 2022 documentation um, for, for that parent, you can, you can include that on the HERE application. Um, if if your circumstances is outside this and you'd like to provide more information, please send an email through the CAO contact us facility and I'd be very happy to advise further on your own individual circumstance. Um, but in the case of income, we're only looking for the income 
for 2022 and whoever contributed to that household income in 2022. Um, we're not looking for applicants' own income. We're only looking for the income of the parent or the guardian um, for that year. And uh, it's just really important to note that um, it's a statement of liability that we're looking for for those who are in employment. Um, an employment summary detail form, RP60, uh, wouldn't be considered for here income assessment. And again, that's all outlined in the here application handbook at cao.ie slash here. Great, right, thanks very much, Sinead. That's something that comes up each year, and this is a really important um, piece of information regarding somebody who's, who's apparently was deceased. Um, Colette, I'm going to talk back over to you now. I have a question that's come in, um, and the question is that they're currently doing a PLC because they wanted to see uh, if they're interested in the area of college, they wanted to study a very wise decision. I want, and they wanted to apply for here as they believe. Uh, she believes she's eligible, um, but she heard that she can't uh, use here if you take part in a PLC. And I was wondering if I could still apply and simply use my leaving server points instead of my QQI results. Okay, yeah, thanks, Colm. Um, yeah, that's correct. Um, the further education training QQI, including PLC students, have their own admissions route. Um, here offers are only made on the basis of leaving certificate results. Um, you can apply to the CAO and indicate both your leaving cert results and your PLC or FET results to be considered um, for offers using both entry routes. However, you can still apply to here based on your previous leaving certificate results. Um, if you do receive an offer on the basis of a PLC, um, you will you will still be able to avail of, of here supports um, once you, you're eligible for here and you've provided the relevant supporting documentation. Okay. So I, I think that answers the question. Yeah, it does. Uh, and I think a lot of a lot of universities have that each year, you know, they they have people coming in who like, you know did a leaving search and then went into the floor, did a bit of PLC and then came back in. It doesn't disclude you from doing that. You just, it just uh, apply, you know, the reduced points uh, entry takes place in the base of the leaving search points, but you can still uh, avail of, of supports in college afterwards, irrespective of the route that you take. And a lot of here students, they they go ahead with the leaving search and they achieve the points they need to get into their, into their chosen course. Then they don't avail of a, of a reduced points entry, but they can, doesn't mean that they haven't, been to a deaf school or they haven't lived in an area where not everybody goes to college, all those things still apply. So they can still avail of supports um in any of our participating colleges um um anyway. So okay, so um Mary, I'm gonna ask you another question now. It's quite a broad question actually. Uh, how do applicants know what paperwork or support and documentation to provide? Okay, so um you know, I think Dan again alluded to this in his presentation. Um, the here booklet is excellent, right? So, and so is the online application system for prompts and checklists. So, when you look at um, your paperwork, every time you finish a section on your um, your online application, or if you refer to the handbook, you will see what exactly you're supposed to be submitting. So, you receive a supporting documentation checklist at the bottom of the application form, listing the documents you have to submit to the CAA. CAO. And this is based on the answers you've given, as Sinead spoke about earlier on in section, section 7 of the application form. Um, and again, these checklists are automated. They spring up. They're constantly reminding you. The prompts are constantly coming up as well. And then just for you to keep in mind that um, 15th of March to have everything in in hard copy. And also, wh where you are worried or you're, you're concerned, again, contact all of us, as Colm and everybody has said. And just if you are a little bit un unsure, go to page 22 of the handbook where the, the actually photographs of the documents are there. They're very clearly laid out for everybody to see what exactly is required. But you will be constantly prompted and asked to check, check in. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Mary. Thanks a million for that. And thanks for reminding us about the prompts as well. So do keep a... Uh... Keep your eyes on the email address that you use to register your CAO account on, because CAO use that to communicate with you. But uh, any other communications are typically held within your CAO portal as well, so you can log in and find those communications there as well. Thank you, Sinead. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. So any CAO will send out email communications um, 
before application deadline. It's really important to, to read all the information that's there um, because it'll help you with your CAO application and remind you about the application deadlines. But when, on your CAO account, there is a correspondence section. So you, you can log in there and you'll be able to see all the email communications that have been issued to you. So it's really important to read those because there's very important information and guidelines about completing the online application. And then finally, that you can actually print your checklist from uh, section seven. So you, you can actually print it out if you want to show it to your parents and guardians. And that will tell you what exactly you need to send to CAO, as, as Mary has highlighted earlier. Great. Thanks, Mary Sinead. And I'm actually going to go back to you again. Um, so again, quite a specific situation. Um, we get a lot, I, I, as, as you know, we get a lot of questions, but there's slight differences between them in, in different scenarios. We have an applicant who is living with her mother um, and the two siblings. Her dad doesn't live with them. The parents were never married. But when she's completing her application form, does she include her dad's income or is it just her mother's household income? Uh, so there's two uh, questions that this could relate to. So the first one is in relation to income, section seven. You're only required to enter the income details of the parent that you're living with. So if it within the household, it's only mum and two siblings, you're only required to answer um, uh, information for your mother's uh, income. So whether it's uh, income from employment or social welfare income, just take yes to the relevant sections and no to the others. And you're not required to enter information for uh, your father. Under uh, section six, which relates to socioeconomic group, um, there's further information there about required about parents uh, jobs, what, what type of jobs they do, their occupations. So in a case where um, you have no contact at all with a fo your father, uh, you can select no contact. But if there is uh, contact there, even though he's not living in the household, you can enter information around uh, his occupation and job details. Again, the HEAR handbook has further information and guidelines there, uh, which will advise you further. Okay, that's great, Sinead. Thanks a million for that. It's an important distinction. And the reason why it's an important distinction is because um, parental occupation and income, um, so a parental occupation being SEG or socioeconomic group, group is one criteria and income is another criteria for the scheme. So there's two different things there. One being income is the household income and parental occupation and uh, socioeconomic group is another. Like the parent not living in the house could be um, a medical doctor or a judge or a barrister or something highly qualified person who will be um, not necessarily eligible underneath uh, uh, so within our social economic group category so that's an important distinction to make so there's two different criteria within that okay so um, I'm just going along here I'm taking off my questions off my list to make sure that I, 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 I've gotten them answered and um, so I'm not missing anything Okay, but well, I am going to go back to Colette with this one. Oh, um, so probably the most commonly asked, asked question that we get, how many points does here reduce their courses by uh, Colette? Yeah, it is one of the most common questions, Colm, thanks. Um, so the, the amount of points of, of a particular course is reduced by, um, the, the course is reduced by, it depends on a number of factors. Um, um, so it basically is demand. So the overall number of places on a course that are available the number of reserved here places on the course um, and the number of here eligible applicants complete competing for the reserved places. Um, again, more detail can be found on the Access College website. Each participating college um, has a number of reserved places for eligible here applicants um, uh, uh, for reduced points. And at DCU, we have 10% of places for reduced points uh, via here. Um, so an example of reduced points is where a leaving certificate points, for example, might be 366 points for a particular course and an eligible here applicant may be offered um, that course on a lower points of, as an example, 356 points. Um, the applicant would also, um, just like any other applicant applying to college based on the leaving cert, would need to meet the minimum entry requirements. And that's really important to remember just because you get reduced points, it, you still have to meet the minimum entry requirement requirements for a particular course um, before being considered for the here, here reduce point offer. Um, so you can see that on the university prospectus. Um, so the reduced reduction in points for here places varies every year 
and you know it, we can never state exactly what a points reduction might be yeah yeah that, that's exactly right they just, they just change each year so it's really hard to in hard to, hard to, hard to, that you'll always see that in the papers and when in the news that some points rise some points fall depending on depending on which, which courses you're going for yeah um, I'm going to answer one of the questions myself here. There's a question that's come in, and can I kind of student apply for here in their second year of college if they're ineligible for the first year and their circumstances have changed? But just to kind of make the distinction, like here only, re again, reduces the number of points that students need to enter into higher education. Um, the, I think what the applicant is talking about is maybe the supports or possibly some financial support stuff that some colleges will give to or allocate to here 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 students or here entrance. Um, um from my experience, and I don't know if it applies to every college, the advice would be to check with the college that currently in and find out how they allocate those funds. Because from my own experience of opening colleges, that if somebody applies for a fund in the first year and they were outside the parameters, or in their income is too high, or in the set, but in the second year, if their if their if the if their circumstances change, they can approach the access service and talk to them about it and just say, look, situation, can you help me out? Um, like the worst thing they can say is no, but uh, it's it's best to check those things out directly with the college themselves. Okay, so <clears throat> just go back to the questions then that I had. So um, I'm going to go to Mary now with a question. We have an increasing number, sadly, of, of students who apply to TUSLA every year who are in care state. So the question to you, Mary, is if you've gone through the TUSLA care system and are currently with a foster family, uh, uh, is your foster family's income accounted for? Uh, Colin, I, it, great news is this is a very simple, straightforward process for children in care of the state. That's the great news. No, your foster family income is not required at all. In fact, it's such a very straightforward process. All you need is a letter from your TUSLA social care worker outlining your case and outlining that you are in care. Very simple. Okay, thanks very much, Mary. Uh, this one might be a little bit chunkier. I'm going to go to Sinead on this. Um, Sinead, can EU students apply for here and how do you supply EU documents? Okay, um, so in the first instance here is for school leavers who are resident in the Republic of Ireland. So this, there's six here indicator, the indicators and four of them uh, are really relevant to applicants who are living here in Ireland. For example, uh, HSE medical card, Irish social welfare payment, uh, Irish dash school and the Irish uh, address, which is coded. So it is not possible to apply to here as an EU student. Um, and part of the reason is that you wouldn't be possible to meet the indicators uh, for that are required for eligibility. However, there may be other inter routes. So if you look at the CA website, cao.ie slash OSL, there's a lot of information there for applicants who are applying um, to uh, the CAO uh, with other school leaving exams. Um, and if there's any further information that you require there, you can send an email through the contact us facility. Okay, that's great, Sinead. Thanks a minute for that. I'm just leading on from that. I had a question come in and it's something that we dealt with last year as well in relation to Ukrainian applicants. Again, applicants must be resident in the Republic of Ireland uh, to apply um, Again, because the here criteria are indicators of Irish disadvantage, you, you are welcome to apply. We strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you, tiny applicants, to check current information on the cost of attending uh, a higher ed education institution with um, individual colleges. Um, you should contact the admissions offices of the in individual colleges for further information on that before you would even consider applying to the CAO. Um, because you would need to provide certain documentation and you would need to pay certain, you may be liable to, for certain fees. And um, so it would be incumbent on you to check those in the first instance. If you are going to proceed with an application and if you are submitting documentation, any documentation from an EU state, it's really important that it's not like a company pay slip or um, statement of income. It has to be something from the state itself and it requires a certified English translation in order for that. Um, uh, for any documentation not originally issued in English. Okay. All right. So, 
Sorry. Oh, sorry, just to clarify, to follow on to, to your earlier question, there might be applicants living in Ireland here whose parents might be living in the EU. You mm. know, and those applicants, if they're, you know, attending an Irish school, can still apply, but they may need to present income documentation from overseas. So just to clarify that, that's an important point, that those applicants can still apply if they're living in Ireland. Okay, all right. That's great. Thanks, Nina. That's an important uh, point as well. Thanks, Nina, for that. Okay, so let's see what other uh, questions. And I just want to make sure again that everything is um everything is uh, rounded off there and don't miss anything. Um, Colette, um, should an applicant have gotten a confirmation email after they uh, submitted the here form on the CAO website? Yeah, thanks. Um, nice easy question. Um, you you. You're welcome. <laughs> You'll receive a confirmation email when you've submitted your your here form um online. Um, and you can log back in and check all information entered, you know, just to check if it's correct or whatever. Um, and then you can also amend that information on your online here application anytime before the 1st of March at 5 p.m. Um, so you will receive a new confirmation email every time you submit your online application. Um, so I think and then just I think. Just um yeah, I think that's it. Just um it, when you are submitting any documents, just ensure that you've um you you you've uh, kept a copy of everything that you've submitted. I think that's an important point as well. Thanks for me for that, uh, Colette. Um Mary, just back to you there. Um it's another a question regarding documentation as well. It's in relation to the social welfare income form. Um, um do you send out a copy of it or is it the actual form itself? Uh, what, what what documentation do you submit in, in relation to social welfare? Okay, so you may submit the social welfare form that's on the college, um, Access College website, web page website, or you may submit a DSP statement. These documents have to be stamped. And again, I refer you to page 22 of the uh, HERE handbook, which is very clear around this. I suppose, remember, um, that these statements have to be in evidence of 52 uh, weeks income, you know, full income for the year. Some applicants, for example, may have, um, they, may be, they may submit their DSP form, but they also may have to submit additionally revenue documentation or evidence of other income. But just remember that it has to be representative of 52 weeks. Okay, that's great. Thanks for many, Mary. Um, I'm going to ask you yeah, another question again regarding um, Sinead regarding separation. And I know this has come up in the chat as well. So I'm going to tick a couple of boxes with uh, two birds and one stone here. But anyway, um, how does the scheme work if a family is separated? I think that means it's, it's, if, if, the, if the parents are separated, I think. Thanks, Colm. So if there's separation, again, the applicant is only required to submit income details for the parent that they're living with. So if if the if their parent if the applicant is living with one parent in the household, um they can submit details of that parent's income for the year 2022. Um, if an applicant is with two households, you can submit details for the parent that you live with for most of the time. Um, so again under section seven, just answer yes or no to the parent uh, that you live with. Uh, to their sorry the income details for the parent that you live with, whether it be social welfare, PAYE income, or self employment income. Um, in addition, uh, there may be cases where applicants, uh, the parent may be receiving a maintenance payment um, as part of that separation. Here doesn't look for that information. We're just looking for social welfare or income from revenue. However, if it is a case that you've your total household income is below 10,000. At that stage, it would be recommended to send in a copy of the maintenance payment, uh, if you know, just to our separation agreement, just to show that there is more household income. And if you've any queries again on that, you can contact us uh, at any one of the colleges or the CAO. Great, thanks, Amy and Sinead. Um, I have a question there, I'm going to answer myself. Uh, the question is, how much money would we get if we're eligible for here? Again, it's just to create that distinction. Um, you're not necessarily receiving additional financial supports if you're if you're if you enter into a college through here. Um, I I think most colleges do offer some additional financial supports, but not everyone does. It depends on the resources that that individual colleges or that individual college here really only guarantees like um eligibility for reduced points entry. Um, um, so that's all it does at that point. 
Um, okay, um, I'm, another question for Colette there. Um, um, how do you know if um, supporting documentation has arrived at the office and uh, can, can they send an email to the CAO to make sure of that? Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. As I sorry mentioned earlier as well, just to keep um the original of all keep originals of all documents um and obtain a certificate of post from on post every time you post something um to the CAO for confirmation that documents you've posted have arrived safely in CAO. If you if you want that, um, please enclose a a stamped self addressed postcard with details of the documents that you have submitted. So you will you will get confirmation that your documents have been received. Yeah, that's if you if you if you follow that procedure, that yeah. will that will that will that will help you out. Actually, another top tip is, is that when you are submitting any documentation, it's really advisable to um write your CAO number on each page because if any of the documentation becomes loose, it means that it can be easily linked back into your online application. So like if you're submitting six or seven pages, it means there's no it reduces the chance of any of those kind of being mislaid or becoming disconnected from your application. Okay. All right. Um, okay, well, I'm just checking the time here. Oh, we're still okay. We've still a few minutes left to go. Um, all right, I'm gonna go back to Mary. Um, there's a question here where there's a dad who pays maintenance, but the child has no contact with him and the dad won't fill out any forms. How does that work? You're on mute there, Mary. Sorry, right, yeah, here I am again. Sorry, you sleep there for a second. Um, yeah, so it, everything goes back to the household income, and I think you've you've heard the trend of it's it's the income submitted is the parent you live with most of the time. So um, the question is, who is the main contributor to the household income, and that is the income submitted. That's the first thing. So, um, and and that again goes back to every type of income coming into the house for that for the year of 2022. So if a parent or guardian is received for example are in receipt of a DSP payment or they're self-employed or they have other income, that should all be evidenced in the application. Um, I suppose the caveat is where an income is less than 10,000 and the implicate the that comes up in their application or that is submitted in a here application that can um i suppose be questioned it, it could easily be questioned if an income is less than ten thousand. so you will have to supply proof as to why third-party documentation clarifying why it is less than ten thousand. and this is why we go back to the point of submitting absolutely everything um so i suppose applicants in direct provision this these rules do apply obviously in terms of being less than ten thousand in income but it goes back to who you're living with, the contribution of the income for the year 2022 and all income, all income from the people um, minding the house that year, if you put it like that. Thanks, Colin. You're on mute, Colin. Thank you. I need to get that button, a T-shirt at some point. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Clint and Mary, I'm going to ask you to think about something while I'm answering a couple of other questions. Uh, first thing is, is I'm, going to, I'm probably going to ask you what happens in orientation or what maybe what kind of support your college offers. And the second piece will be any top tips you might have in for any here applicants and what, what they should think about. I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes with those. Um, but in the meantime, um, I have a question regarding how do we know if we're eligible for here? Well, I... Um, you only get confirmation of that. Um, is it the 27th of June this year, uh, 2024, 28th of June? Or do we know? We don't know that from the State Exam Commission yesterday, do we? 27th? Hi, Colin. So once the Leaving Cert is over, we will issue the HERE application outcome. So if it goes on last year's Leaving Cert exam schedule, it'll be around the 27th of June, will be the afternoon. But you can also log into your CAO account um, at that time to view the outcome of your HERE application. If it's eligible, you'd see that. If it's ineligible, it'll give you the reasons why. It'll list each indicator and tell you what indicators you met and why you didn't meet other indicators. So once we have a confirmation of the Leaving Cert exam schedule, uh, we publish that and we can confirm then the date that the HERE outcomes will be issued. But it, it, it will usually be on the last day of the Leaving Cert or, or the day after. Yeah, okay. Great, thanks a million for that, Sinead. 
Um, actually, I have another question for you, Sinead. The, um, the question is, what happens if you submitted your documentations already, but then you're moving house or moving address? What do you do in that case? Okay, so um, if you've submitted your documents, um, we we can still assess those documents uh, once we, we have your CAO number and all those details on it. So the, the first thing on, on the CAO application, you can change your address uh, to your new address. Um, so you should include the address uh, that, that you use for, for correspondence. On your HERE application, we would recommend that you enter the address that you, you live at at the time of completing your application or within the period you know between November and 1st of March so you have the opportunity to go in and and still uh, update your new address details on your online here application before 5 p.m on the 1st of March uh, so obviously that depends when you're moving house um, if it's after the 1st of March uh, you, you can leave your current address at that on the application form um, the main thing is that we will correspond with you by email um, so even if you are moving house, you'll still be able to access your your um, emails from CAO and your here application emails, and you can view all that information on your CAO account. Um, but if the address is different on your on your documents um, than your current address on your application, uh, there's no need to worry. Just make sure you have your uh, name and CAO number on all the document uh, pages so that we know it belongs to your CAO application and your HERE application. Okay, thanks for mentioning Sinead. Uh, there's quite a few questions that come in about, you know, income and do I have to have been on social welfare? Not necessarily. There are six criteria, key criteria or indicators as we call them for, for HERE. The only one that's mandatory is that you have to be under uh, is income and you have to be under a certain threshold or a certain uh, income threshold for that. It's to um, made me at the moment 45, 46,000 euros and you need to be under that amount of money. That household income can be made up of paid employment. It could be income from social, the Department of Social Protection or e-social welfare. That's the only mandatory one. And then after that, it's a combination of of, of, of circumstances. So there are plenty of people out there who are working in uh, 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 in jobs where the, uh, 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 where the income total household income is below that and they're not on social welfare. So not necessarily some people are, some people aren't. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm going to go back to yourself, Mary and Colette now regarding the questions I asked you earlier on. What kind of supports does a HERE student receive or a student who enters via HERE and receive when they start in University of Galway, Mary. Okay, so um, I've written the list. So we have a lot of support for our here students in University in Galway. Um, one of the things we noticed over the years that um, as students came to the university, um, their parents were dropping them off on that first day and the first week and very traumatized. So we actually set up an orientation for parents and students. So we hold a full day orientation on day one for parents and students. The day we have anything up to 500 people in that day. We split it into two parts for the day. Um, it culminates in lunch for both sessions. Um, we set up a panel at the actual orientation. We have a panel of expert speakers and they address um, financial support, personal support and social support to the students. So it's very much focusing on the supports and where your, where your daughter or son is, is arriving to in the university. Then we have one to one sessions available with myself and the HERE team in the university as well. We financial aid fund specifically for HERE students, we fenced funding for HERE students. We have a laptop loan the students on the day of orientation will receive a free laptop and we also have emergency funding and within um, a couple of weeks of, of arriving in the university uh, we host them for a study skills seminar covering the jargon of arriving in a new university, a new learning environment. Well, that's really useful, actually, Mary. It's a very comprehensive set of supports there. So the same question over to yourself, uh, Colette. Yeah, um, so the first support um, when students come in through the HERE programme at DCU is the orientation, like many of the universities, we run an orientation. So students come in early. I think that we all here and all the practitioners in the universities really understand how difficult it is a transition. You're coming from the school, from the, the familiarity, the friends, um, moving away from home, uh, coming to a new city, new university, new ways of learning. There's so many challenges. 
um, although very manageable, but we're here, we're there to help you. So we do, we we put on a lot of things at our orientation to kind of ease you into those kinds of things, such as study, new, learning about new ways of studying, introducing you to some of your lecturers, learning about all the supports that we offer. Um, one of the main focuses of our orientation at DCU is making friends. Um, so coming to university is very nerve wracking. We totally understand that. Um, and we do a lot of social activities, um, same like Mary mentioned, where we try to um, get you to meet people, people you'll be in class with doing the same course as you, people who become friends for life and you get to meet them at our orientation and start that sort of social bond and um, making things life a bit more enjoyable and stuff. Um, so I think the bit, making friends is a big piece of our orientation. Uh, following orientation, um, in a nutshell, we, we will meet all of our students and we recognize that not everybody is going to need all of the supports. So we try to get to know you all a little bit and tailor the supports to the individual and um, make sure that you're getting the things that you in particular need. Mm -hmm. yeah, most most first year students that I know are having a far more active social life than than I can I have anyway I can only dream of at the moment <laughs> um and I definitely had that in the first year um I probably had a bit too much fun in fact yeah. okay it's a, it's a great time it's a great time it is, so it, lots it, to look forward magic, to it's, it's a magic time in life mm. it is um you're in for a treat um it's a great uh, it's, and it's a really important part of it as well you know friends for life kind of thing is yeah you can't you can't uh, I can't uh, I can't overemphasize how important that is um any um Top tips, so I suppose I'll go over to you, Sinead, Dan, and top tips in terms of uh, making an application for, or, yeah, you'd like to pass down to any here applicants. Thanks, Colm. So my first top tip would be to make sure that you complete all the relevant information by the deadline. So make sure you apply to CAO before 5 p.m. on the 1st of February, and then you have until 5 p.m. on the 1st of March to complete your online here application. Um, so that's really important. And the supporting document deadline is the 15th of March. Um, you will receive a number of email communications from CAO, reminders about important dates. Please read them. There, there's important information about documents. I would also advise that you follow the instructions in the HERE Handbook 2024. That's available on cao.ie slash HERE and on accesscollege.ie. And that will take you through your application step by step. It will take you through the online application, sections one to seven and eight, and also what's documents are required and then if you if there is something um in your application that's uh, a little bit different you you can contact us uh, at any of the participation colleges uh, here email address or cao so my top tip is uh just make sure you meet the application deadlines and read all the information and you're on a first step to making a complete here application absolutely Sinead. thanks a million and uh, colette you have a top tip there please yeah, um, my top tip is um, when you're doing your CAO application, put in order the course that you want to do, like really think about the, the order that you're putting it, it in um, realistically, of course, with the points that you're, you know, you're, you think you might get. But think about um, the career and you're going to be working until you're 65. So it's a long, long time. So you might as well be doing something that you'll enjoy and um, that you want to do. So just just think about that really, really carefully and put down the choices you know with that in mind rather than what you think you might be able to get or what you think you should go for because you can get those points just think about the working life ahead of you great thanks very much uh, for that and uh, mary your tips for applications applicants yeah um this morning in galway we were meeting groups of students filling out their cao application and just like what colette said there to make sure that you have your choices in order and, be, and put your all your passions at the top of your cao application make sure you're very passionate about what you want to do we're not jumping between commerce and biomed etc you know that you have a theme and and thematically follow the I suppose, and that's really strong, um, you know, because it, there's a lot of mistakes made sometimes in CAO applications. And the thing I would say about your HERE application is just to make a strong, clear and honest application on HERE. Um, sometimes, you know, when it comes to particularly around um, what your parents do and the type of work you do, you can hijack yourself a little bit. So just be very honest and very clear and give as much information as requested as possible. That's my tip, Colin. Right. Um, I'm going to give a tip as well, is that get cracking on the do supporting documentation early. Um, if you were to look to revenue for 
um, statement of liability or it might take a couple of days for the Department of Social Protection to give you the statement that you need or to get their documentation or a, a two-slip letter or whatever it happens to be. Somebody could be on leave. Anything can happen. Get cracking on these things as soon as possible because when you get the more notice you have, the more uh, you, you provide people, the more opportunity you have to get um, the documentations in on time. Um, it's going to be up to yourself as the applicant to post these documentations in. So get them in your own hands um, and put them in an envelope and post them off to the CAO. They're not uploaded, they're posted and make sure they're posted by the 15th of March um, to the CAO in Eglinton Street in Galway. And, and again, do write your CAO number on, on, on each page. Um, do I have any last questions coming in here? Just because uh, uh, we have a couple of minutes um, before we uh, close this off. Um, now, uh, oh, Sinead, here's a question. How does an applicant know if they're living in an area, a disadvantaged area for consideration under that uh, criteria for, for, for here? Uh, thanks, Colm. So there is a website called Pobal. It's P-O-B-A-L dot I-E. And if you go into that website, they have a map system. So it's the deprivation indices maps. Uh, so every address in Ireland uh, has been given an air code. So what you can do, if you go into the map system, you click on the small area 2022 uh, legend and you can enter your air code or your address. And then that will bring you to your address on the map. Um, and it will tell you um, if, if you meet that criteria or not. So to meet the disadvantaged area, your address has to be coded at minus 10 or below. So those are the scores um, that, that here is looking at. And this um, map is based on the 2022 census data. So it's actually national data. It's not uh, decided by here, it's based on national data. So on that map, you'll see the really bright orange areas are classified as disadvantaged. Uh, the, the more orange and redder it is, uh, you know, the, the score would be equivalent to disadvantaged area. And if it's blue or green, it's, you know, affluent or marginally below average. So all that information is there. You can log in and put in your address. Um, it's very straightforward and, and very easy to do. Okay. Yeah, thanks a million for that, Sinead. I'm going to do a couple more quick fires before we wrap up. Um, the question came in regarding the income. Is it gross or net? Uh, it's gross income. So um, the income threshold of €46,790 is gross income, i.e. before tax. Um, um, any others I can see coming in there? I'm sorry to uh, sorry to be doing these off the cuff. I just want to make sure that I, that I get it right. Um. I think we covered it. We covered the uh, we covered the date. We covered the, the years of application. It's twenty twenty two only, not twenty twenty three or twenty twenty one. And I think they're the kind of main ones I'd want to cover. I don't see any kind of FAQs. Just so you know, if your question hasn't been answered by us online, um, via this uh, there or sorry via this here um questions and answers session. Um, you can ask your questions and continue ask them to ask them through the link that Leah has posted in in the chat function. Um, our uh, people will be answering those questions till after three o'clock today. And if you don't get a response or you don't get an immediate response to the question that you ask, don't worry. Somebody is on the end of that, and we'll answer it in due course. If you think of a question that arises on Wednesday on the basis of watching this recording or a week after that. Again, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Go to accesscollege.ie forward slash here. You'll see a bunch of, um, um, you'll see at the top of that page, participate in colleges and there are phone numbers and email addresses where you can get in touch with one of us directly and we'll be the, able to answer your questions. You can chat through these, uh, you can chat through the questions with us. Use accesscollege.ie and the, the handbook on there as a source of information. Uh, and don't be on your own uh, if you have a question. There's no reason for that to exist. If you have to ask the question two or three days in a row, do that. Um, uh, we're here to support you. That's what we're paid for. Well, it's what I'm paid for anyway. And I'm happy to, uh, we're happy to respond to those, those questions. So uh, I don't have anything left to do other than just say, again, this, this, this webinar is recorded. It will be sent out to you via, via your email address. It will be your email address and it will be hosted on Access College um, probably on Monday or Tuesday next week, depending on 
uh, how quickly you can get out of the box on Monday morning uh, or what's on my what's in my inbox. So in the meantime, I just have to I'm just, I'm just checking through my notes here to make sure I've covered all the bases so I don't get myself in trouble. Um, so the last thing I have to do is to thank everybody. Um, I want to thank uh, Mary in University of Galway, Colette in DCU, who um, uh, extra kudos, Colette, for jumping in to help us out at the last minute. Uh, Sinead Quinn and CAO. Um, not to forget Daniel uh, McFarlane in, in Trinity College for his fantastic um, uh, presentation. To Minister Harris for his welcome address. Um, to Jude as our captioner on PCO, we see you there. You're walking away in the background doing live captions on this. Thank you very much for that. All of my colleagues uh, are, are here, um, advisors who are online answering those questions via the link that are online. Thank you so much for your help. To the guidance counsellors, and we know you're online with us today, you are supporting your students throughout their school experience and helping them with their applications to here and to there. Thanks so much for your work. And to all of you for attending the webinar today, thank you very much. And finally, to my colleagues, uh, Leah and Andrea in, this, in, in the IUA who helped, uh, helped uh, make this uh, success today. And finally, sorry to all, my, all of our colleagues in the CAO who make this tick and run and operate smoothly every year. Thank you so much for all of your work. Again, we will remain open until after three o'clock to answer your questions. In the meantime, thank you and goodbye, everybody. <laughs>